In this video, I'm going to show you how a classic feedback loop structure, the reinforcing feedback loop, is an underlying driver of climate change. Climate change results in events like floods, forest fires, and rising sea levels, which are at the top of the iceberg. These events are caused by the exponential growth of greenhouse gas emissions, a pattern of behavior that is in turn determined by systemic structure at the bottom of the iceberg. Remember that when a pattern of behavior shows exponential growth, the underlying structure is a reinforcing feedback loop. So we know that reinforcing feedback sits at the bottom of this iceberg. Notice how structure at the bottom of the iceberg, in this case reinforcing feedback, gives rise to patterns of behavior, exponential growth, which then give rise to events at the top of the iceberg. So we know that reinforcing feedback loops are involved, but which feedback loops? There are two that are most important, and if we understand them, we have a better chance of taking effective action on climate change. CO2 emissions are determined both by how many people there are on Earth and by how much energy using capital, automobiles, airplanes, factories, they collectively use. Human population grows via exponential feedback. The larger the population, the more births, the larger the population. Similarly, the more energy using capital, the more profits accrue. Some of these profits are reinvested in more energy using capital, creating a second reinforcing feedback loop. For the last few centuries, both human population and the amount of energy use have been growing, driven by these reinforcing feedback loops. And so, the shape of this CO2 emissions curve is determined by the shape of both of these, each powered by reinforcing feedback. Like everything that grows exponentially on a finite planet, CO2 emissions are running into limits, which produce the symptoms of climate change. Greenhouse gas emissions and climate change are not the root causes, not the deepest challenges at the bottom of the iceberg. Instead, the deepest drivers are the structures that create our large and powerful social and economic systems, the forces that shape the growth of populations and of economies. Addressing these underlying drivers is going to take new thinking and innovative ideas so that our social and economic systems stop producing dangerous consequences like climate change. The good news is our history is full of examples where people have changed social and economic systems. Think about the rise of democracy or the abolition of the slave trade. And today there are all sorts of new ideas for restructuring social and economic systems. Ideas like workers cooperatively owning businesses or economies being oriented toward well-being instead of economic growth. Ideas like incentivizing energy conservation or promoting the education of girls and women. The opportunity is that these sorts of interventions at the level of root cause have the potential not only to make climate change better, but also to make our world better, more just, and more sustainable. Getting started means digging in. It means asking yourself how the events at the top of the iceberg are being caused by the structures at the bottom of the iceberg. That's where the journey begins. Are you ready? Thank you.